What's up, folks? David Soto Jr. here, and this is the David Soto Jr. Podcast. What's up, folks? Welcome to episode 85 of the David Soto Jr. Podcast. I am your host, David Soto Jr., and today I want to talk about just, I'll just say it. It's diets don't work. They're not sustainable. Even uh, my favorite diet the paleo diet isn't sustainable for some reason. I've argued over the years that it is. Um because I was able to maintain it for so long, but now that I look back, I wasn't. Uh, especially now, the fact that I'm going on like year four of not really being paleo. Um, and, and, and trying to go back to it. So, there is a highlight of my diet life, which has happened recently. That has got me you know, changed my perspective and is making me realize that I was wrong, not all wrong, but the biggest change is that um, basically, if you can go on a diet, you can go off of it. And chances are that you are going to go off of it. But in order to get to the point that I really want to talk about, I got to give. A brief history. Um, I've struggled with my weight since I was a child. I've tried every diet. Once I started dieting in high school, I tried every diet. Uh, I even have started, or at some point, going to uh, Overeaters Anonymous, which didn't seem like it would work. The, the work if you the, the it works if you work it blah 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 I just didn't it didn't sit right with me and but that was even after my point is what I'm trying to get to is that in 2011 I started eating gluten free it was the next thing I was trying I uh, post on social media gluten free hashtag gluten free and then I started seeing this word hashtag paleo What's paleo? Looked it up. It was a diet. Um, bought Rob Wolf's book, The Paleo Solution. And it just took off from there. For me, it made the most sense. It was accumulation of everything I've ever heard of or doubted or didn't. Just everything in, in my life up to that point in 2011, the paleo diet made sense. And it still makes the most sense to me, but uh, it's, it's just, it doesn't make it sustainable because it makes sense. I had su success with paleo and for the next two years or so, I was in the best shape of my life. I basically weighed about 275 pounds, dropped down to 240, 238 and then maintain that weight. Well, well, I maintained that weight for quite some bit, quite some time. 238 was always the number where I was at. But let me take a step back here. After, uh, and we have to talk about why I had such success with paleo. But I think we're going to do that in the, the next podcast. This is going to be kind of like a two-parter. Um... I took all the information in I could about the paleo diet, Rob Wolf's book, uh, Mark Sisson, uh, Diane Sanfilippo, all right? That's an important name. I listened to the podcast, read the books, and just took in as much information as I could, posting pictures of myself. Um, I just was got into 
my goal was to be as paleolithic or as caveman as I could as I got into natural uh, movements, body weight exercises, barefoot running, trail running. I just, I felt awesome. I looked pretty good too. I thought my search for the perfect diet was over. And in doing so, I kind of became a social me- a, a, a subject matter expert on the topic. Started a social media, started a website, became a trainer slash a coach. Um, had some clients. They had success. I had before and after pictures. Everything was going great. There was one client who didn't get results in working with me. And I ignored I ignored that. Also now that I think about it, there were people who over the years have reached out to me and would say stuff like, I've been in paleo for so long and I'm stuck and nothing's happening or um I'm still not feeling well, blah, blah, blah. I say blah, 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 blah. Sorry. And I always respond, oh, keep sticking to it. Keep going. Keep. It'll work eventually. Um, but I personally was in the best shape of my life. And uh, as a result, I was super judgy of people. Um, and we're just like roll my eyes, like mm, you should be paleo. They post comments about their health, I'm like she go paleo. Um, I did that for a while. It was pretty. I was pretty well known. Um, within my small group of people that associated with either uh, in real life or on social media. And I d- started a company, uh, uh, again, with a website, a company training, and was putting myself out there. Got rid of all my 2X clothes for the first time in my life. I was wearing, well, probably not the first time, but the first time in, since I grew out of them, I was wearing extra large um, but then I got in a relationship with someone and the stress, I'm, I'm, I feel like it's the stress of that relationship, um, caused me to gain weight. I got back up to my pre-paleo weight, I think. Uh, around 275 and I was still this like paleo guy my name was primitive Dave and I had t-shirts and I was I put myself out there and I was super judgy of people that when I gained weight I felt horrible because now of course I feel like people are gonna judge me I'm this guy this primitive paleo personality guy and I gained weight that should have been my first sign that it wasn't sustainable um so I decided that okay well I have to get back in shape I can't have pictures of me on the internet uh this is ridiculous so I tried to go super low carb I tried a bunch of stuff, kind of, but that's when I started going low carb because, of course, low carb, you know, gets people so so skinny and lean and fit. It didn't work. Um, it may have helped for some, I don't know, but it did not help. In the meantime. I was getting some blood work and my liver enzymes were going up. I don't even know what that means, but possible 
uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Um, but I got out of that relationship, moved in my own, out on my own, uh, started, I even wrote a post how I lost weight. One of those was get out of relationship. The other was I started eating whatever I want in moderation. So I started, I, I, I ate, remember eating a piece of sweet bread. Mexican sweet bread from the Mexican part of town, I guess. Felt so good about it. it tasted so good. And took a picture, a, a selfie. I was just so happy <laughs> to eat, to, to, to not be so strict on myself. Uh, other things I attributed to losing weight was... Uh, relaxation for me that's taking uh like mineral salt bath and stuff uh, i was doing some yoga and i was able to just walk everywhere i intentionally would go places i lived in the city i was able to walk and go wherever i wanted you know counting steps i was just getting a bunch um way over ten thousand and Covering some mileage. So, I ended up getting back in shape. Passed my PT test for the military. That was stressful that I was... Uh, I started sharing my... How I did it. Wrote a book. Wrote more books. Now I'm the author about the subject. Um, and then getting... So, I got back to being an expert. And, and got back to judging people <laughs> again. <laughs> Did not learn my lesson. I should have. Uh, I was less harsh. I wasn't judging people so much for uh, their weight as I was their habits. And then people complaining about stuff and then still eating garbage or whatever. And then one day, I started to write fiction. And I started to... Realized that the people who follow me because of uh, how my nutritional and, and, and movement activities and advice were not no longer uh, weren't really there for my book writing and publication uh, exploits. So that's when I what I call killed Primitive Dave, and I changed all my social media. And I just like, gave up being this expert in the paleo diet. And, 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 and I did not stop eating that way. But I stopped trying to project that onto other people. And that was a relief. Um, but I, so I gave up being the expert. Gave up trying to tell people what to do. Gave up uh, uh, putting people... Uh, through some type of diet and regimen. And I just started writing fiction. and But I was really enjoying my life writing my books. But I, my point, I still ate paleo. I still did. I just didn't push it. I didn't take pictures of my every goddamn meal I ever ate. I still ate paleo. I still um, maintained my weight. Uh, but I threw in some nachos here and there. Oh, and tacos. Um, in the meantime, I was not happy with 238. I was like, why can't I get super lean and super cut? So there were some times where I did strict, practically no carb, as no carb. And I don't, not just low carb. I try to do no carb. And I didn't see any results. I didn't see anything. I remember doing 30 days and like feeling a little better after the whole keto flu or carb flu or whatever. I have to curse. I don't have to curse right now. 
um, I came, I got past that, I started feeling better, and maybe got a little healthier, but nothing really changed that first time. Then later, a year or two later, I tried it again, and I went for a long, I went like for 45 days. And, and, and I remember making a post like, I've been keto for uh, 45 days now. Why aren't I skinny? Um, so that's a, another clue that I ignored that diets don't work. Eventually, I... reunited with you know who we had a baby we got married we had another baby and I reached over 300 pounds in that time where I was I was gaining weight I was like I uh, I gotta get back on my diet I gotta go super low carb I gotta do again there's several times where I tried to go super low carb one uh, that didn't work there was one time where i went low carb which is hard when you live in a house with people who aren't low carb and you like donuts right i like donuts i like pan dulce i uh like cinnamon rolls they're my favorite but i was slowly gaining weight i told myself i gotta go strict keto would do it nothing would happen happened and I fall off the wagon once once I hit 300 pounds I like said okay I gotta do it and so I like buckled down and sucked it up and I did manage to lose like 20 pounds uh, but that happened like within the first month or or so the rest of the time where I'm still super strict uh, low carb, uh, nothing is changing. At the time I was posting pictures and people were like, man, every week I was able to show that I was dropping weight and then it just stopped. (laughs) I even started an entire other website, which I just deleted because after, uh, plateauing for months, um, I even have a podcast during that time that was why aren't something about why haven't I lost weight? Um, Oh, I wrote about my health update in keto sabotage or podcast about that. That was episode 61. Um, because that's when I f- f- fell off the wagon. Why can't I lose weight? I there was a short time where I didn't. Oh, I didn't write it in the title of the episodes. But it was episode forty-two. Why can't I lose weight? And this was one where I was talking about. I was doing everything. I was getting on my. I was getting. M- 20,000 steps in a day. I wasn't working yet. Again, 20,000 steps a day. I was eating in a, 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 um, I was using my fitness pal. So I was below my daily caloric uh, requirements according to that thing. I was doing everything right and I couldn't lose weight. Right? I was everything doing everything right that you're supposed to. I was following a good diet and it wasn't working. Um, so I continued to gain weight when I hit 300 pounds, I tried one more time, stuck with it, lost 20 pounds, but this plateaued for months at a time. And that is frustrating. That will just, uh, take the wind out of your sails. And then in that episode that I just told you about how I sabotaged myself, I, 
consume something sweet on a daily basis, which I didn't intend to, and it had no sugar. It had sweetener in it. That was a, an accidental purchase. But even eating something sweet kicked me out of keto and gave me cravings that I couldn't fight off. Um, and I've essentially been struggling since then. That was about a year and a half ago. Uh, maintaining a weight. And so I've been maintaining a weight of about 300 pounds. So pretty disappointing to get down to two, to put myself out there again. Drop weight, then gain it back. And eventually I was like, you know, fuck it. I took all of my stuff down, all of my websites, all of, I, I, I canceled my hosting. I just took everything down. I was like, fuck it. I can't do it. I can't even be a, a good example. I can't lose weight. What's going on? And it's been frustrating. And then just take me to a few weeks ago where I started to, you know, to say, you know what? No more restrictions. I'm just going to start adding stuff that's good for me to my diet. Because I was paying a lot of attention. I was watching a lot of videos about uh, foods that are good for you which I know a lot about that. But when you get into details of like foods that are specifically like good for your liver, um, which I remember I said, I had liver enzymes issues and there's all kinds of things that were leading to me having liver issues, right? Uh, inflamed liver, fatty liver, sluggish liver i didn't essentially know exactly what the liver did and that's the the point uh really is that the liver gets ignored because the knowledge isn't there we know the pancreas does we know how important it is it control <coughs> controlling blood sugar but what's the importance of the liver it's pretty goddamn important and uh, people tend to ignore it. So I was like, okay, well, let me start feeding my body healthy stuff and just give it to me. Just give my body this stuff. No restrictions. No, oh, uh, you can't eat this. You can't eat that. Or you'll just be a piece of shit. I just got rid of that attitude. Started adding good things. And then... Somebody popped up on my TikTok. And this person was somebody who I used to follow when I was a big paleo person, right? And he, he popped up on my, on my TikTok. And I was like, I know that guy. That's Diane Sanfilippo's husband. I'm like, oh. I wonder how Diane is doing. And I had an interaction with Diane almost on a regular basis when uh, I was the, 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 the if primitive Dave, right? Uh, I listened to her podcast. I went to her live feeds. I, I, I chatted back and forth, commented. Um, she even... can hear my stomach growling. Uh, at, that, at that time, she she knew who I was. Um, and I knew who she was to the point where I knew that she got married to this guy, uh, Scott. I'm like, hey, he's in my feed. I wonder how Diane's doing. So I go and I to her Instagram and I barely recognize her. She looks different um, to what I have, what, I saw her last, when I saw her last on Instagram or whatever, because I unfollowed all of these paleo people when I started writing fiction and gave up all that up. So I hadn't been following Diane in years. And when I looked at her, I saw her. There's no way to, there's no way around this, but she had obviously, her face was fuller. She'd obviously gain weight and, and not like in a negative sense, but she was like super fit, super lean, uh, you know, 
leggings and sports bra working out pictures type of stuff, right? And and then now she just she looked nice, she looked great, but she was not this ultra lean, healthy, cross fitting person that she was before. And that piqued my interest more, more than anything else. Like, is that is that Diane? Did, why did she look different? Well, she looked different because she wasn't that like again, she wasn't that super lean, cross fitting, weightlifting person that I knew of years ago. So then I started looking at her feed and I saw pictures of a croissant breakfast sandwich that she had made or, or bought or, or and I clicked on it and I saw some negative comments about the fact that she had published books and a like she was kind of famous for a 21 day sugar detox her book was awesome and I've bought it several times and given it as gifts it really made me understand uh, how and why we should avoid grains right because of what it does to gut uh, impermeability etc cetera, etc cetera. she had awesome pictures like it was a phenomenal but somebody made a negative comment i started basically what diane did is she also she just quit she gave it up she it was doing trying yeah on my scale what the stress that i went through with gaining weight and being in in the public eye at a small scale compared to a new york times bestseller right me just a little guy trying to be Diane Sanfilippo. I wanted to be a Diane Sanfilippo. I wanted, and the reason I couldn't is because she works a lot harder than I do. <laughs> she is a workhorse, and I admire her for how much work she put in. Like, if you look at her book, it's beautiful. And and when I saw her like working on publishing your next book or another book, I just saw how much work she put into it, and I thought to myself, I could never do that. I, I, as much as I want to be at, at a level of Diane Sanfilippo, I will, will never be able to put in that much work. Anyways, but she, so the stress of being in the public eye at a minuscule level and then gaining weight or wanting to eat popcorn, <laughs> um, Knowing that you have these people watching you and you're like, oh man, I like kettle corn too. Awesome kettle corn. That's not paleo. Oh, the amount of people that'll tell you that doesn't look that look very healthy. That doesn't look paleo on social media. Take the stress that I went through and then multiply that by uh I'd be giving my too much to my myself too much credit if I said ten. Multiply that by a hundred. You have me, and then you have Diane Sanfilippo, as far as subject matter expert level, right? Author, book selling, on the paleo diet person, she's had the same struggles that I went through. And here I was ashamed of my struggles, because I didn't want people like Diane Sanfilippo to, to see me and judge me and look at me. And she was going through the same thing at an inflated level um, so that brings me back to I reached out to her we talked we had a, lo a little bit of a conversation and in, in messaging and I am grateful to see Like, it was this weight off my shoulders. Like, if this person who is the awesomest, one of the most awesomest persons that can be a uh, paleo guru has realized, has went through the same struggles as me and has decided to give it up and it's better, better for her overall health to include mental health, if this person can walk away from it 
than I can. <laughs> and I could just eat things that are good for me, not have any restrictions, and slowly get in better health. And I don't have to beat myself up because I'm not following a specific diet. I don't I don't have to beat myself up for saying for like oh I eat I eat caramel corn that from the guy who sells it outside of Menards or kettle corn. I could eat whatever I want. And add these healthy things to my meals get the benefits from them and slowly work my way back to instead of drastically wanting to lose weight by a, a certain time why don't I just add good for you stuff to my diet which I don't know whether to talk about it in this episode or next episode but when you add these things to your diet, essentially I was I just started making salads and throwing in healthy things. Kale and pumpkin seeds and, and uh, olive oil and uh, lemon juice and just uh, uh, everything that... Vegetables, really. If you just realize, if you just think leafy greens, vegetables, all those things that... Uh, oh, eating sweet potatoes. Like I had to give up sweet potatoes. I had to give up fruit. Right, because I'm super low carb, blah blah blah. I need to lose weight. Fat people eat fruit. Wrong. Fat people don't eat fruit. That's the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. Okay. Um, fat people. It's like, anyways, we'll get we'll get to that in the next episode. I felt relieved. No restrictions. Just eat real food. Jerf is something you used, people used to say. Just eat real food. Now, the big if I say diets don't work, why do they work sometimes? The reason is because when you start a diet, more than likely, you're going to be giving up sweets. You're going to be giving up bread, croissants. Um, fried croissants like they take croissants and they fry them and then they glaze them in, in, in frosting or sugar like a glazed donut but it's a croissant it's delicious um, but if you go on a diet you're going to end up giving up a bunch of high caloric things, things that spike your insulin things that Things that make you fat. And those, it's pretty obvious what those things are, right? Uh, any high sugar content food. When you do give these things up, it does help uh, regulate your blood sugar, it could reduce some inflammation. Um, even if you're just counting calories and you eat a little piece, even if you eat a little piece of something and you're counting calories, you're like, ooh, that's a lot of calories and that little thing is not worth it. I could eat a turkey sandwich instead or something, right? Uh, so diets, some, sometimes diets work because you're, you're going to give up the garbage that made you fat in the first place, right? And you know what I'm talking about because if you ever like, I'm going to eat this, I'm going on my diet tomorrow, so I'm going to eat this as much as I can. Because tomorrow I'm going to diet, I'm going to give this up. I know this makes me fat. And when I go on my diet tomorrow, I'm going to not eat these things anymore. So I'm going to eat it up right now. The problem is, is you, you know, Sunday night you gorge yourself on, on, uh, yeah, you know, pizza for dinner and then and then cinnamon rolls for dessert and then chase it down with a beer or whatever and then the next day 
you do something that you fall off the wagon and you, you're trying to follow this strict diet and then you fall off it. You're like, ah, fuck it, I didn't. I'll start next Monday. Um, but that's why diets sometimes work. Because you're giving those things up. You know exactly what not to eat. And the diet that you're going on is not going to include those things. Whether it's going to be paleo, whether it's going to be carnivore, whether it's going to be vegetarian. Um, Weight Watchers, Atkins, Mediterranean, which there are a lot of things that, 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 that is the most reasonable. I've heard it for years, but I'm not going to get into it. Anyways. That's why some diets work, but it's temporary. I'll explain more in the next episode. Uh, Folks, I appreciate you tuning in. Mm, My social media is at David E. Soto Jr., JR for Jr. TikTok. I don't post a lot on TikTok, but I'm trying to. Like, I have all these, I post like projects that I work on uh, around the house. And so I'm working on a lot of projects because I'm probably at ADD and I can't concentrate on one thing. Um, so I have a lot of projects going and I'm recording them as I go and I'll post a bit. TikTok. But who gives a shit? I guess. Uh, that's it. I appreciate you tuning in. Stay tuned for the next episode where I'm going to talk about diabetes. Diabetes.